damn, these lights are bright. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Tom. So yeah, um, I work at Unity. I've been there about, no, I want to slide ahead. Here we go. Try this again. Here we go. I work at Unity. I've been there about six months now, but I've been in the field of uh, XR and related technologies for quite some time. So I thought I'd talk to you today about a uh, little bit about where we've come from and maybe where we're going with this insanely awesome technology. So we live in a 3D world. People uh, move, they think, they experience in three dimensions. But for some decades now, human computer interface has been less than that. As computing continues to get woven deeper into our daily lives, in a lot of ways, interface hasn't quite caught up. We, uh, we still uh, use these devices, or perhaps they use us in uh, ways that are at some removed from how we work in the real world. So from punch cards to the command line to graphical user interfaces to touch screens, we've made significant improvements as a computer industry in usability over the years. But we're still at some remove from how we operate in the real world. We peer through an endless sea of information by scrolling through pages and flipping through tabs linearly while trying to keep a mental map of information and its connections that are much higher than one dimension. And what do we do? We share experiences. We remember and share experiences online in the world around us by capturing only the photons in front of us. Smile, everybody. Anybody got a Theta or Gear 360? They only got you people right there. Well, in the future, information's going to be where we want it and when we want it. Its essence laid bare, its connections for all of us to see. And in fact, information is going to achieve six degrees of freedom, just like everything else we do in the real world. In a virtual sensorium that maps the web onto the real world and brings the real world into the web. So the transformation that's going to happen with immersive tech, it's going to be staggering. And Clay Babor, Babor from Google had said this, um, when we move to a new kind of user interface, it unlocks new things for us. In fact, computers become more broadly accessible, more accessible, more useful, and more valuable to us. And we're seeing that transformation with immersive tech. Now, a lot of us are here because we believe that already, right? But I think most of us would also admit we can't imagine how it's going to actually change our lives over the next few years. Any more than back in the day, we can imagine how the internet disrupted brick and mortar retail, or how the smartphone upended transportation and hospitality as industries. But still, we got to ask ourselves, and, and the, the possibilities around this, we're going to talk about some of these in a minute. But still, we have to ask ourselves, why is this now? Why is this whole transformation happening now? In fact, 3D graphics has been around for a long time. We've been tinkering with VR and AR technology for decades, right? Why now? Um, so if you don't know this, 3D graphics actually is almost as old as the computer itself. It traces its roots back to the 1960s. And 3D has been used for decades in lots of industries, from design, engineering, simulation, training, finance, sales and marketing, and of course, games and entertainment. Um, but for a long time, that was on really, really expensive hardware. Well, everything changed over the last decade because now we have 3D computing hardware that does this. We also have a lot of 3D content in our daily lives. If you look around, we see 3D everywhere. We see it in CG movies, where it's rendered one frame at a time. It's in our video games, whether they were on dedicated consoles or running on a phone. And it's even you know, the sight of a uh, CNN analyst comically meandering around a broadcast set with 3D. That's actually become a part of our daily lives as well. It's part of the uh, everyday news cycle as uh, CNN and these companies buy for attention. Um, but really, 3D was a niche technology for so many years. What's changed? And, and really, it was only video games. Video games pioneered 3D technology. It was the only mass consumer real-time 3D tech to ever simultaneously solve for the high cost of production and mass market monetization. You know, and why is that? Well, that's, you know, historically, 3D, the expense of it, 
has never been justified by rendering it on a flat screen other than in a game. Well, all of this changes with XR now, with inexpensive stereo displays, with holographic optics, with 360 capture, with um, volumetric capture. All of these technologies are making the creation and access cheaper. And let's think about this for a second. We also have millions of 3D content creators out there that we did not have a decade before, thanks to gaming, VFX, animation, design, and these other industries. But most importantly, we now have an interactive generation. Um, put a print magazine in front of any three-year-old, what's the first thing she's going to do? Tap it. Pinch to zoom. Today's kids are tomorrow's XR natives. So with XR, 3D is no longer a sideshow. It's the main attraction. With XR, there's really nowhere to go but in. Now, we, we talk a lot, and we're going to see a lot of hardware at the expo in the next couple of days. We talk a lot about the innovations and new kinds of display hardware and all that. But really, over time, the majority of the value in these new industries is going to be created in software, content, and services. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking to you about, talking to you about Unity, my company, and the unique role we play in this industry. I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with us. Um, and if you're not, what we do is we make a high performance, very powerful 3D authoring system and game engine that people are using to build games, using it to build rich experiences in 2D, 3D, VR, and AR across a variety of platforms. Um, by the numbers, it's kind of crazy. Let's talk about uh, you know, how, we, uh, how we help the world out here. 30% of the top 1,000 free mobile games were made with Unity. Five billion app installs on mobile devices were of Unity-powered titles in Q1 this year. That's across two billion devices. 58% of developers surveyed, they may use other tools, but they use Unity to make their VR and AR. And over the two-thirds of the world's VR and AR content is actually made with Unity. When you look at augmented reality, the numbers are even more Amazing. 82% of Euphoria-powered apps have been made with Unity, and 91% of HoloLens apps. And I suspect the other 9%. I'm not sure what, I, what else uh, things are built in besides Unity, but there it is. So to say that we are the foundation of the world's VR and AR is, is an understatement at this point. So understanding that and understanding the role we occupy within this industry, let's look a little bit at some of the cool made with Unity, uh, specifically augmented and mixed reality applications that are out there. Uh, Rewind Studios, a London-based content studio, created this uh, experience for Red Bull. Um, it's called, what's it called? I forgot the, Flight Deck, there we go. Flight Deck, which is an application that brought the Red Bull Air Race onto your tabletop or onto the floor where you can watch it in a bird's eye view and you can get overlaid uh, sports information about how the racers are doing. So this is re-envisioning brand experience and live sports at the same time. Scope AR has created Remote AR, which allows you to actually uh, talk to remote field technicians, get video and audio assistance, um, have information overlaid that's actually 3D information about how to repair and assemble. And they actually built on top of Unity, uh, using our plugin architecture, a bunch of really uh, cool stuff that synchronizes 3D objects and all the different media types together. And so this is uh, revolutionizing the way people can work on equipment and train. The Gruffalo experience, this, the Gruffalo is a beloved uh, picture book in Britain uh, set in the English forest. And the, the Gruffalo characters are basically overlaid onto a live forest. So this is changing the way we experience the outdoors. You bring your tablet or your phone into an outdoor setting and you're seeing animated characters come to life in augmented reality based on those stories. AR is also killing it on toys. If you know about swap bots, these are really amazing. They're physical toys where you can swap the parts and then they have information overlays in AR and gameplay, single and multi-user in AR. And there's also Mechamon, which are these actual physical robots that you operate with your smartphone. And then using AR, you can see them shoot each other and you get explosions and all that kind of stuff. Amazing, using augmented reality tied to t physical toys. So that's really blurring the lines between the physical and real worlds. I think we're all excited, super excited about AR and education, right? So um, on the left here, we have MyLab for HoloLens, which gives you basically an overlay of information. You know, in the laboratory, it's educational, in this case, about chemistry. And then MergeVR, who's, uh, they, they have a really wonderful soft uh, VR headset 
cardboard style, has created an AR product, which is a physical cube. It's called the Merge Cube, that when you look at it through your Merge VR on a regular old smartphone, you actually see educational information overlaid onto the cube. That is wild. So I don't know if you remember this quote uh, from Mark Andreessen. He said this in uh, 2011, software is eating, eating the world. All right, well, let, you know, if this isn't exciting enough, and you're not already convinced about this, and I'm sure you are because you're here, but in case you're still skeptical, it's really time to suspend your disbelief. Big companies like Facebook, Google, Euphoria, you know, startups like Meta and the big funded companies that are at this, they've made huge and probably I'll just raise a big round. They are making huge investments in this space. This isn't going anywhere. And the stuff we've seen at F8 and Google I.O. very recently are just more evidence that the industry has made a big commitment to immersion, right? So, you know, in a sense, this has been one big long experiment. We've done the R&D together. It's been sort of a proof of concept. But we're continuing on this. We're doubling down. So, you know, Tango. Tango is coming to phones now for real. Asus and Lenovo demonstrated phones at Google I.O. that have a fisheye camera, a depth sensor, and an infrared sensor that, when combined, can uh, give you real 3D environment scanning. But it's more than just scanning the environment. You can actually map an interior. So what Google did for Street View, uh, Google's uh, talked about their technology called World, World Sense Now that's going to map interiors. But it goes beyond mapping interiors. You can actually now use a smartphone like this with these uh, new Tango-based kind of technologies and scan entire environments, literally bring them in. This was a quick scan that was done on the show floor of I.O in about 10 seconds. But with about 10 minutes work, you can create a pretty realistic scene, bring it into Unity, publish into a Daydream app. And so with these new generation of nifty smartphones, combined with smart software, software is poised to literally eat the world. <laughs> but it's not just about giving people the tools to pull that stuff in and build apps. It's also about being able to share it using a global infrastructure a.k.a. the World Wide Web. Also at Google I.O., they demonstrated an extension to their WebVR browser. WebVR is the API that lets you connect a browser to VR hardware. They showed Web AR. So imagine you're just in some new version of a browser on your phone, and you do this, and you scan the environment around you, and you can, say, drop a piece of furniture into it. Uh, with that, basically, the world is your QR code. You don't need a specialized app anymore. It's just everywhere. You know, There's no more of this oh, I want to go into the Nike store and see the shoes spin around. I have to go get the app first. You should be able to do that on demand. Yeah, so this is all getting really exciting where these lines between the digital and uh, physical world are going to be so enmeshed that soon it's really going to be a choice of what kind of filter you want to put on the top of it. It's going to be up to you. And that's the great stuff happening now. But let, let's play it forward a little bit. And I don't think this is the first time you're going to see graphics from this. This is making the rounds now. Keiichi Matsuda, a filmmaker and designer, made this really cool concept film called Hyper Reality that was released last year. It's about a six-minute film, and it talks about some of the promises and dangers of augmented reality. Um, and now imagine that, that uh, technologies like AR combine with future AI and Internet of Things, so that now at your whim, when you're thinking about things, you can actually control the world around you. And imagine all this integrated. Now, it could be a, you know, brand-infused candy land, or it could be a hot mess, right? Swipe, swipe left to reset your life, reboot all your credits, right? And these technologies that promise to bring us together could actually isolate us more in a super sad, true love story of our own making if we're not careful. But, you know, I'm actually pretty hopeful, to be honest. Um, we've been here before. We've had disruptive technologies that we've had to deal with. We've coped with the changes, right? Um, but these are going to be significant changes. We're going to bring real magic into the world, and you know, like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, we may be uh, ruining what we unleashed if we're not careful. But who knows? You know, with technologies like this, and especially if we democratize them, if you learn technologies like Unity, if you learn how to design for VR and 3D, we have the cheap tools. If we can democratize this, we could have the next 15-year-old YouTube star, or maybe someone that develops a cancer cure, or cancer treatment, rather. Or who knows, maybe they make the next masterpiece in XR using Tilt Brush or some other wonderful tool like that. Um, so, you know, that is the promise of this stuff. And it's really, at the end of the day, it's really about real-time 3D. We can think about all the hardware issues. We can think about production and all that. 
but it's about taking the stuff of the real world and making it our interface. It's about making the world our canvas, and it's about making interfaces for people. And at the end, that is about 3D, and that's where the future is. So I thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy AWE, and let's build that interface together. Thanks.